A major headline to come out of Puerto Rico today is that a special panel comprised of three judges who have taken a look at the evidence into the Ricky Rosillo chat investigation, uh, that panel has concluded that there is sufficient evidence to charge the former governor with crimes and to not only charge the former governor with crimes, but members of his administration. Now, charges have not been filed, and the panel has decided to appoint two independent prosecutors to conduct their own investigation, to use the information already provided by the Justice Department, and to conclude on their own whether or not the governor and members of his staff and administration should be prosecuted. Take a step back, this all relates to the reason the governor resigned. You remember last year, the Center for Investigative Reporting uh, published the Ricky Chats. Essentially, the governor was fond of using Telegram and members of his administration use it as well. Uh, somebody leaked the chats. We don't know who it is. Uh, names have been mentioned, but it hasn't been proven. But at any rate, uh, the chats were leaked. The Center for Investigative Reporting published it. And around about two weeks later, the governor resigned after people rose up and uh, peacefully forced him out. So it is significant what the panel has to say. And I'm going to go through the release that was issued today. Uh, I didn't put it out earlier because, number one, it was in Spanish and I needed to have it translated. But also I wanted to get some context so I could sit here and kind of walk you through it and help you understand what it means. It was written in a very legalese way, so I had to um, spend... 45 minutes on the phone tonight with the man who handles uh, media relations for the special panel who was terrific in kind of walking me through what is said here. Number one, the two independent prosecutors who have been appointed are Miguel Colon Ortiz and Leticia Pabon Ortiz. They will focus on the possible illegal actions of former Governor Ricardo Rosillo, Christina, Christian Sabrino, Alfonso Arono, Ramon Rosario, Edwin Miranda, and Elia Sanchez. The panel says, in an extensive analysis on the relevance of evidence, the rationale and requirements of affidavits and the aspects that determine the quantum of evidence, as well as the extremes contained in the law, the panel thoroughly examined the preliminary investigation conducted by the Justice Department. So Rosario resigned. Who took over? Well, Pierre Luisi was in there for a hot second, but Juan de Vasquez became the governor. She was the justice secretary. So someone else took over at justice and they conducted this investigation. Their preliminary findings from that investigation were then turned over to the special panel. Now the special panel has, has appointed two independent prosecutors, okay? The panel says this, for all the outrage that reaches what is expressed therein, it is highly insufficient in itself that we proceed against all members of the chat without responsibly making a weighted, serious, and objective analysis of cases in that point to the Commission of Criminal Offenses or Violation of Government Ethics. Here's what they're saying. That basically everybody involved in the Rocio chat, and there were upwards of a dozen people, that not everybody uh, did things that rose to the level of a crime. And they actually named them here, so I'm going to name them for you. The panel believes that the following individuals should not be charged as of now. Things could change, but as of now, the panel does not believe there is sufficient evidence to charge Jennifer Alvarez, the former press secretary, with a crime, or they don't believe there's enough evidence to charge Rosie Santiago, who was the former director of the communications office, and the former secretary of public affairs, Anthony Merceda. They don't believe there's enough evidence to charge them. However, they do believe that there's enough evidence to charge the individuals I mentioned earlier. And as to what they would charge them with, I'll tell you that in just a moment. This was an interesting quote from, um, from the actual individuals, uh, from, from the panel. They said, expressions in the pitiful and painful chat are offensive, denigrating to women, officials, and private persons. Undoubtedly, the lack of wisdom and prudence denotes a procedure more than insulting, unworthy and embarrassing that constitutes a disgrace to the positions held by former members. All right, here are the other names of the people that were involved in the chat that the panel does not believe there's enough information to charge them with a crime. The panel does not believe there's enough information to charge the former Secretary of State, Luis Miranda. 
Raul Maldonado, the former Secretary of the Interior, who was also Rosillo's Chief of Staff at one point, Ricardo Larandi, and contractors Carlos Bermudez and Rafael Cerame. As of right now, the panel doesn't believe there's enough to charge them, but prosecutors come, could come later on and say, no, there is enough, and so we're going to move forward with charges against them. That's a possibility. But as of right now, based on the analysis of the evidence at hand, they don't believe those individuals should be charged. Having said that, here are the individuals who the panel believes could be charged, and here's what the panel believes they could be charged with. The special panel believes that the following crimes could have been committed. The panel believes the former Governor Ricardo Rosselló may have committed a breach of duty, negligence in the performance of duty, and a violation of the government ethics law. The panel believes Christian Sobrino may have violated the law in terms of making a threat. The panel believes that Mr. Sobrino may have also violated the law in terms of breach of duty, negligence in the performance of duty, and a violation of the government ethics law. Alfonso Arona, the panel believes he may have violated the law in terms of breach of duty and negligence in the performance of duty. The panel believes that Edwin Miranda may have violated the law in terms of what is known as ideological falsehood, illegal use of work or services, undue intervention in government operations, and undue influence. The panel also believes that Elia Sanchez may have violated the law in terms of illegal use of work or services, or undue influence. Those are the charges that the panel sees could be made presently, but they want these two independent prosecutors to do their own investigation. Start with things that haven't been done, use the evidence that's already provided, and the two prosecutors have 90 days to conduct their investigation and then tell the panel what they're going to do. Um, they don't need the panel's approval to file charges. These two investigators can walk into state court and file charges. Uh, I will tell you that one thing that's interesting about the statement here is that the panel notes the Justice Department of Puerto Rico, which initially conducted this investigation, turned over 37 boxes of evidence, but they only turned over five sworn statements, only five affidavits. 37 boxes, but only five affidavits. So one thing the panel says is, you know, basically we, we, we needed more. We didn't, we didn't get a ton of stuff from them in terms of, of sworn statements. So now the two independent prosecutors can go out and they have subpoena power. They have the ability um, to get some sworn affidavits. But yeah, 37 boxes of evidence, but only five sworn affidavits. So that is the context, that is the information, and that's the status of the investigation at this point. Listen, I know a lot of you watching this may say, I don't have any confidence in this, but this is the process, and this is where it stands. The Puerto Rico Justice Department started, they did an investigation, and they turned over their findings to the uh, special panel. They didn't have to turn it over to the special panel, but they did. The special panel now reviewed all of the evidence and they said, we want to appoint two independent prosecutors. Those prosecutors, by the way, do not work for the panel. They are simply hired by the panel to do this particular work. They're not like uh, staff attorneys, if you will. And those two attorneys have the legal authority to walk into court and to file charges against the former governor of Puerto Rico and the other members of his administration, which I mentioned. So. That's the information as I have it now. More when I get it. Have a good night.